So in the last video we went over how to read a text file in and split it up into lines and we kind of based what we were doing on this nice Python function read lines which does basically that. You read, you open a text file and then read line splits it into a nice array of uh, strings which are just the lines that occur in the file. Another another nice thing that you frequently do in, in Python when you're processing strings is you use a, a split function. Um, so this line shows how that works. If you if you have a string and you split it, by default the character or the delimiter that you're splitting on is, is the space character. And so what it does is it every every time it sees a space character, it considers that the end of a word and then it returns a list of uh, words which can be really convenient and it also has some flexibility so if you don't want to use the default space character you can split on any other character and I kind of want to I want to write some C code that imitates that functionality in C and you can see from my output here that I've, I've kind of you know I've solved the problem and I'm gonna go over my solution but I want to say that what I've done is is pretty complicated. I'm not really happy with the level of simplicity here. And if you want to try a different approach, I suggest you Google and, and look into this function called uh, getDelim. Um, I didn't use that function because if you if you read the, the manual for getDelim, you'll see that it takes a file stream as input. And I wanted to do this parsing after I had already closed my input stream. Um, but that's probably a more elegant way to do this. On the other hand, you know, how does this function work? I guess maybe in a way that's similar to the code that I've written. Um, so just to mention some terminology, I'm going to be using words token, tokenize, delimiter. So delimiter is the thing that sort of defines a break in, in the objects in the string. So here the delimiter is space, but we want to write our code so that the delimiter could be other things too if we want. And tokens are just the things that are become the atoms after we break it up into parts. So token is, a, is another word for a part. And um, this is splitting a string or tokenizing a string. That's just terminology. So let's go over how the code works for tokenizing a string. This is the same uh, file that I was talking about in the previous video about uh, about reading in a text file and all that stuff that we did last time is all this junk so just ignore that and focus your attention on this new stuff um, so I define uh, the delimiter to be a character and in this case I'm going to use space and I kind of modeled my approach on what we were what we were doing before um, num tokens is the number of tokens that have been found in, in the string that we want to tokenize. And here is the, the split function I've written. It takes a string and it splits it. So what does that look like? That's going to be an array of strings, right? You can just see from my output here that the output is going to be an array of strings. So that means an array of arrays. And so the right type to use here, again, is char star star. And if you don't get that, you should watch the video on dynamically allocated two-dimensional arrays. So the line that I split is just the first line that came out of the file that I read, which is the first line of the, the lorem ipsum. Okay, so what does the split function take? It takes a, a string that you want to, to tokenize, it takes the delimiter, and this you pass in by reference and it gets updated inside the function uh, and it records the number of tokens that were actually found. And I need that so that I can keep track of how long this becomes. How many how many ray, how many rows does this two-dimensional array end up having? I need to keep track of that because C doesn't allow you to recover that information. So I store that in this variable num tokens. All right. Uh, so let's go down and have a look at the the split function. So here it is. It returns a, a char star star. I make this assumption, which I, I don't put any input checking in for, which is that line is a null terminated string. 
if that were not true, then my code would explode. And so if I were going to, if I were working for a company or something, and this is code that was going to go into production, I would probably make this code a, a little bit more complicated to, to try to verify that uh, the user had actually typed in a, a null terminated string here for this first thing. Anyway, this is the line that we want to tokenize. This is the delimiter. And like we said before, this variable that gets passed in by reference is going to record the number of tokens that occur in this line. Um, and so this code, in, in fact, I, I just changed a lot of variable names inside the code that I've already written for reading a line above. And for that reason, again, if, if I were doing this seriously, there's so much code in common between this function and the other function, they should probably be refactored so that there's not all that duplicate code and the things that are similar should be put into just one function that could be used by both methods. Um, but that's just a, a style thing, I just kind of brute, brute forced it here. Uh, so tokenized is going to be the 2D array that gets returned of uh, the strings that occur inside the line and I allocate some memory for that. I have to guess how many rows there are going to be because I don't know beforehand. And so I guess one. And I know that's going to need to be updated, but because I want to make sure my code works, I put in this ridiculously low number just to make sure the update happens. So I, if that is something that's going to cause the code to explode, I want it to explode right now so I can see. So it seems to deal with that okay. Um, so this while loop, sorry for bouncing around. Here's a while loop. Um, the while loop is, is going to go while this variable called line position is less than the length of line as a string. So here's one place where I'm using this assumption that line actually is a good old C string. What line pause is, is sort of the current character that we're looking at inside the line. Initially it's zero. This variable i here is a counter variable and it's going to keep track of the number of tokens that we've seen. Initially we've seen zero tokens. This stuff, if you watched the last video, you know this is just memory reallocation. So this assumption that there's only going to be one token is ridiculous. And when we have a number of tokens that's equal to the amount of number of tokens that we can accommodate in memory, then we need to do this reallocation. I talked about that in the previous video, so I'm not going to talk about it again. Okay, and so now, this is a 2D array, we need to allocate some memory for the current token. And so I do it like this. I can, if I, what I've done here is I've taken the string length of the rest of the line. So, you know, this is a pointer hopping move. Here I'm going out as far on the line as we've, as we've processed, and that, you know, the, the suffix of a string is also a string because it's just chars and it's still null terminated, right? And so this thing has a string length, and it's, it's going to, this thing I want to be a string, and so I need to also allocate memory for the null terminator. But I know that this thing can't possibly use more space than that, which is actually, a, you know, kind of a relief. Um, so I don't have to worry about dynamically allocated, allocating memory in this other direction. This is going to over allocate a little bit, but I'm willing to live with that. This could be tightened up if I wanted to make the code more complicated. Here you want to just make sure that some memory was actually allocated. Um, if it wasn't, then you've got a problem. Um, so after I've allocated the memory, I make it the empty string. So it's nothing but the null terminator. This variable chars processed is going to keep track of how many characters were looked at inside this function. The idea of this function next toke is that it just vomits out the next token that's found. In some weird cases, we're going to look at, we might look at a bunch of characters but not find any token at all. Like what if the delimiter is space and um, the rest of the line here that we're going to be processing is just nothing but spaces, then we're not going to find any tokens at all, but we are going to process a bunch of characters, and so we want to keep track of that so that we end the while loop at the right place. Okay, so I have this, this function set up so that uh, it returns end of file if, uh, if it doesn't process any characters for some reason. 
and let's go over the the input to this. So it takes this uh, string, which is going to be modified inside the function to contain the next token. Uh, this is the remainder of the line that we have to process, and so it's going to analyze this, and if it finds a token, it's going to put it in here, and it needs to know what the delimiter is. So that's the idea of what that function does, and it returns the number of characters processed. It might it might just finish off the file, in which case we break. We need to make sure that there actually was some token discovered. So that's what this conditional on line 121 is doing. So here it's just the empty string, which has string length 0. So here I check to make sure the string length of the, the thing that was passed in by reference is actually increased. Otherwise, we haven't actually found any tokens. But if we have found tokens, then we increment i, because i is a variable that keeps track of the number of tokens that have been found. Now we just update line position to uh, reflect the fact that we've processed this many characters. And uh, the number of tokens, that's a variable that was passed in by reference to this function to keep track of how many rows are in our new 2D array. And it's just the number of tokens, i. And then you return uh, tokenized, which is the new uh, two-dimensional array. So the only thing we have left to talk about is this next token function uh, that gets the next token out. So let's look at that thing. It's defined right here. Like I said, this code is a little bit more complicated than I'd like it to be, but this is just what I came up with, and it's one way to do these things, and maybe kind of informative, even if it's not the most brilliant thing in the world. Um, so here are the parameters. Let me remind you what they do. Um, so int is uh, the return value, and that is the number of characters processed. Okay, So that's what the return value is. This is something that's passed in by reference, a string. It's going to be modified within this function. These other parameters are constant. So that this const keyword promises that these are not going to be modified at all. This is the string, which is the remainder of the line to be processed. And this is the delimiter. So it's a char, it's an int, it doesn't matter. It's not going to be modified in this, in this uh, function, so I uh, use the const keyword here. And if uh, the string length of the line is nothing, then I, I return, um, and then the program would exit back when it pops back out to the split function. The number of this variable is going to reflect the number of characters that we've read, and so it's initially zero. Uh, this pointer L I'm going to use for pointer hopping, so it's initially just the same memory location as stored in the line variable. And this is the, the while loop that looks through, and it's, uh, OK, so this is dealing with sort of a weird case, like I was talking about earlier. So what if the delimiter is space and line is nothing but spaces? <laughs> you sort of need to spin out until you get to the first non-white space character. And that's what this while loop from 84 to 88, 87 does, is it just spins, just walks out the string, eating up. Uh, eating up delimiter characters. So it says while the current thing is the delimiter and you haven't gotten to the end of the string, uh, keep walking out and record the fact that you're processing these characters. Okay, so this is going to keep track of whether the delimiter was actually found. For the last thing in, in the string, you probably won't find another delimiter. Like if we're processing this string, and when we get to Lucilius, whatever that is, there's no delimiter after Lucilius. So in some cases, when you get the next token, you won't find another delimiter. And this keeps track of, keeps track of whether it was found or not. OK, so this while loop is basically eating a word. We know that we're at the beginning of a word because of this pre-processing that we've already done. And this is saying, while uh, the line pointer is not at the end of the string yet, and the delimiter has not been found, we do these things. So this is just copying the word that we're looking at into uh, toke, which is what uh, was passed in here. And when the function is over, this is going to contain the new token. So here's the, the new token being copied into that variable. Every time we process a character, we record that we're processing it. And we check to see if we're looking at a delimiter 
Uh, and notice that when we get to, to this line, L has already been incremented, so we're looking sort of one more ahead. We look to see if it's the delimiter. If it is, then we record the fact that the delimiter has been found, and that's going to bust us out of the while loop. So that's the ordinary way to, to exit the while loop. This is sort of a boundary case when you're at the end and you run into the end of the string instead of another delimiter. Okay, and uh, so this, make sure that your, your token is null terminated. It needs to be a, a null terminated string, so I'm uh, you know, it's been incremented here, we're pointing to the next empty slot, and I just put a nice uh, zero on the end of it there. And now I, I return the number of characters that I've looked at, and so uh, there's this contributes an extra one if we've actually found a delimiter, because we want the uh, the little point, the index that's keeping track of where we are in the string to sort of be one ahead of, uh, to ignore delimiters. And actually, you know, just going over it with you, I realize that that's maybe a little bit inelegant because it's a little bit redundant to have this delimiter eating while loop and also and also uh, do this. But I just wrote this ten minutes ago, and um, can I say that maybe I'm being I'm a little stupid because I have a sinus infection? That's no excuse. That's no excuse. Um, so here's the output. You can see that it it works. Um, if you haven't had a lot of experience programming, you know that this is not a good enough test of the code. We also need to look at some some really weird things, make up uh, some inputs that are just as weird as we can imagine and make sure that the thing works on those. So here's some somewhat crazy input that you could process with delimiter being space. And so you need to make sure... Uh, this is weird. I'm going to pause the video here. Okay, sorry, I just changed this variable name but hadn't updated it here. So now I'm, uh, I'm trying to tokenize this using the space delimiter. So let's make sure that it still works. And it does, right? Uh, so there are a bunch of I's here and it delimits those. And what if it's, it's nothing but spaces? So you want to make sure that it still works in that case. And it does, it just doesn't find anything at all. So this is sort of the empty output. And what if you give it an empty string? So that's another thing that could happen. I want to make sure it works in that case. So yes, the empty string is the, the right output there. And what if there are no delimiters at all? What if it's just solid other characters? Let's make sure it works then. Okay. And it correctly concludes that there's exactly one token there. So I'm pretty convinced that this code works. I mean, never say never. But those are, those are some unusual cases. Again, if this was going to go like into a commercial product or something, I would do tons more testing, but I'm pretty sure it works. And that's the way I, I solve that problem, so I hope that helps explain some things.